Hello everyone, today we'll be modifying and improving the infamous blue acciaio anvil. The word acciaio means steel in Italian, although that's about the only relation to Italy, as these anvils are cast in the Czech Republic. The quality is generally okay, but aside from the hideous color, almost all of them need some structural modifications before they should be used in any kind of serious blacksmithing work. So let's get to it. I'm going to be using a coarse file, a smoothing file, and a half round file to take down the sharp edges around the face of the anvil. This will prevent the workpiece from getting scratched or dented while you work. I'm only rounding over the edge to create a smooth transition. Generally, you don't want to modify the face of these anvils, as there is only a relatively thin layer of hardened steel surrounding the bulk of material. The only area of the anvil that you do want to have a sharp edge is along the step. I'm just going to remove a bit of the rough casting material to clean up this area. As you can see here, there is also a ridge of jagged steel surrounding the pritchel hole. Moving on to the hardy hole, which is coincidentally my favorite hole, you can see that these edges also need some refinement. I'm going to use the flat file to clean up these edges and slightly round off the transition. The horn on this particular anvil needs quite a bit of modification. There is generally a lot of hardened slag on the surface, a ridge running from the tip to the pritchel hole, and I'm not exactly sure what happened in the manufacturing process, but the tip of the horn looks like it was recast or forged on separately. I'll begin by removing the raised ridge and blending it into the natural transition of the horn. You can begin to see a little bit of what the casting material looks like. It's composed of what looks like small, ball-bearing sized composite material. And now begins the long and wonderful process of paint removal. You'll definitely want to use your PPE during this stage, as wire wheels can be fairly hazardous for your eyes, loud for your ears, and dusty for your lungs. And since I don't want to subject you to the horrible sound of grinding and sanding, please enjoy this musical interlude. All in all, the paint removal took much longer than expected, as the surface is heavily textured. I was here for roughly 90 minutes before it started to look somewhat decent. The next step is to give the anvil a solid cleaning with acetone to dissolve any residual paint. I did multiple passes with a clean rag and acetone, followed by dipping a brass wire brush in acetone and scrubbing all of those hard to reach areas, like around the base of the horn and around the lettering. Since the anvil is now stripped of its protective covering, it will be very susceptible to rust. There are multiple ways to prevent rust, but I've decided to go with the cold bluing method. I'm using a super bluing compound from Birchwood Casey, and despite its name, it's actually black. Before proceeding, it's really important that the anvil be completely clean of any oil or grease at this stage, as it will act as a resist to the compound. 
You should also wear rubber gloves, a respirator, and eye protection, as this is technically a corrosive acid. During the cold bluing process, you're essentially converting the surface steel to black iron oxide, while also depositing a coating of copper selenide. This doesn't add much in the way of hardening, but will give a decent amount of protection against rust while naturally blackening the steel. The method of application is fairly tedious, as it needs five to seven coats to be sufficiently protective. After applying the first layer, you can wait approximately 30 seconds to a minute before rinsing the surface with water and drying with a clean cloth. Once the surface is dry, you should give a light pass with steel wool and then repeat the process until your anvil has reached a sufficient depth of black and coverage. As I have some deep pitting on this side, I'm using a heat gun to make sure all of the interior areas of the anvil are bone dry to prevent any rust buildup. This next step can't be overstated. You'll want to cover the entirety of the anvil in a good machine oil. I've done multiple generous coats on all surfaces. This should be a part of general maintenance and it's not a bad idea to continually oil the surface once a week to keep any rusting to a minimum. If you like this video, please feel free to show me. Hit the like button and subscribe, leave a comment or share this video. Every little bit helps me to continue making content and I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and happy blacksmithing.